Hello everybody and welcome back. I have got some great news for you today. Got my handy dandy notebook and you know I was thinking if I'm going to keep doing these I probably should try and invest in a teleprompter. Really not going to. But maybe a better background. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Okay. First story up is from California. There's a veterinarian named Quan Stewart, or Quain Stewart. He treats homeless people's pets for free. Wonderful. He drives around um, Skid Row in LA or in downtown San Diego during his time off and he takes care of these animals with absolutely no charge to the owner. Now I think that is absolutely wonderful. I think that is just, you know, most people don't want to be homeless and to have to give up their pets, you know, it might be the only thing that keeps them going, you know. So for someone to do that is just exceptionally kind and wonderful. And the second story is another animal story. And you guys are going to love this. Well, it doesn't start off very good, though. Um, there was a 16-year-old toy poodle named, I think, Portia. She was taken off of the back deck at her owner's house in Pennsylvania by a hawk. And the owner saw it happen but couldn't get there quick enough. And so she said, uh, even though she watched in horror as this happened and she figured she'd never see her dog again, she did go out searching for hours in hopes you know, of finding a dog. But then it got really cold and it got to be nighttime, so she had to go in and she was just very upset as I, as we can all imagine. Her dog, besides being 16 years old, is also very tiny, only weighs six and a half pounds, is blind and deaf. So she didn't hold out much hope for the poor little thing. But, the next morning, or the next day later, um, she got a phone call from a local vet clinic saying they think they have her dog. She's like, there's just no way. I saw, you know, the hawk took her, but she went down there anyway. Well, this was the story of apparently what happened. Um, I guess four blocks away from her house, the hawk lost its grip on the dog and dropped it. And eventually, um, it's not clear when, but it kind of says maybe the next morning, a neighbor found the dog and um, took her to the vet clinic. And they hurried up and um, put the dog in a heating tank because something that small being in like 10 degrees overnight they evaluated her she had no injuries no broken bones no lacerations nothing so the woman got her dog back and what a wonderful story that is and thank you to the neighbor for doing that how awesome is that okay we're going to move on to a different kind of story, but it's a good one, too. They have former inmates start forestry business using skills learned in prison. Isn't that interesting? I didn't know people could join some kind of work program or whatever in prison that had to do with forestry, but it sounds cool to me. It said, following 2018 release from Las Lunas Prison, low-level offenders Lawrence Armillo and Joshua Melendrez decided to apply skills they learned with the inmate work camp to the outside world. They recruited fellow inmates and 
created the business of All Around Forestry, LLC. And it says here, they've already had several con contracts in New Mexico. Melendra said, being part of the business has given him an opportunity to do things a better way. Excellent, excellent. Let's see, he finished up saying, we did wrong in the past, but that's not us anymore. We've changed our lives completely. Now, isn't that great? I think um, there are probably a lot of good programs in prison, but people don't really take advantage of them. Or maybe they don't know how to apply it to their life once they come out of being incarcerated. But, you know, if there's more programs like these that could give them working skills that people actually need. These inmates came out and they weren't sure what they were going to do, but then they found out there was a need for their forestry skills, and that's how they ended up making their own business. I think that's a fabulous story, and I wish every prison had something like that. Then we have one here that's a great one too. A taxi driver in Roseville, California picked up a 92-year-old passenger who told him she was on her way to the bank to withdraw $25,000 to send to the IRS. You know what this is. This is a scam. You know it. I know it. The taxi cab driver knew it. Well, let's see. He knew it wasn't right. The driver, Mr. Raj Singh, tried convincing her it was a scam. She let him dial the phone number that called her from her phone. She had a cell phone. And he tried talking to these people. They said no, they didn't know her. And eventually they hung up on him. And he tried calling back and they blocked him. She still wasn't convinced, so he finally drove her to the police station where they convinced her. They told her, yes, this is a scam. No, you should not be sending them any money whatsoever. He drove her home and she saved $25,000. Oh. If people would just get more involved in their communities, just talking to their neighbors, I'm sure this all started with him just doing a little chit chat. And the police were so impressed with him that they called him back to the police station a few days later. They gave him a $50 gift card and a thank you card for being there. For someone when he could have just minded his own business and dropped her off at the bank and that's all she wrote. But no, he got involved, he talked to her a little bit, and he really saved this woman a lot of money. Now, this last story, wow, wow. Okay. A man in Van Buren County, Michigan, is being hailed a hero after saving the life of a paraglider who crashed into a frozen lake. The witness saw a parasailing unit in the air and heard the motor faltering at about one to 200 feet altitude. Now, he didn't see the uh, thing crash, but he drove to the east side of the lake and saw where it had crashed into the lake. He said um, he started to make his way across the ice to where the victim was trapped underwater. Holy mackerel. First, he called 911, then he made his way over there, and sure enough, the victim was under the ice. Because of all the gear the victim was wearing, and it was so wet, 
um, the witness couldn't get him out of the water, but he could lift his head up and out of the water. And when he did so, the victim gasped for breath. Apparently he had been underwater, the police are estimating, for at least five minutes. Well, the, the witness, he held that guy's head up over the water until the fire department came. The fire department got both of them off to safety and then they took the, the victim who was unconscious to a hospital in Kalamazoo. And as of the last I read on this, um, he was in critical condition, but he was stable and breathing on his own. Wow. Wow, what if that guy hadn't been there and seen what was going on? You know, this story could have had such a different ending. And you know, they didn't, from what I read, the article I read, there may be others out there, of course, um, they didn't give names of either of the men. And I'm thinking the witness probably just doesn't want any kind of notoriety, which I get that. But wow, you know, it's, I'm glad they posted this story anyways, because again you know pay attention to what's going on in your community and there are so many people out there good people willing to help and to go above and beyond so forget about all these negative news headlines and the coronavirus and all that stuff and just think about these really great people out there they're just regular everyday people like you and me but they're they're willing to help so anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this good news. I will do another one next month around the same time. If you guys got any ideas or anything you want me to do, make sure to put it down in comments. I'll be looking at everything. Anyhow, thumbs up. And it was nice talking to you. And you, take care.